Hello, everybody. Hello. We're back with another YouTube video for the Channeling Eric um, YouTube channel. So, we're going to have a lot of fun today because I think Eric's going to bring a very exciting person in for us to talk with. What do you think, Eric? Can you bring... Hi, Eric, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> he Sorry. says hi, Mom. Sorry. He's saying had, hi to everybody else. I hadn't had enough coffee. Uh, all right, so... Jeff, um, Eric, can you bring in Jeffrey Dahmer, the serial killer? <laughs> don't be afraid. I don't know. I don't know who he is. Uh, I'm very, I'm kind of glad I don't know who he is, but at the same time, I, I feel a little ignorant too, so. But, no uh, worries. Yeah. Just if he doesn't come in with a chainsaw, you're fine. If he does, run for cover, girl. <laughs> We have a lot more other people here, too. Oh, wow. Probably his victims. Are they? Mm, no. One, two, three, four, five. Eric. Six, seven, eight, nine. And then that's him. God, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm about to say something stupid. I, I don't know. But, you know, when you think serial killer mm -hmm. maybe you think of someone i, I did mm -hmm. like big and um you know just you, you think that they would have that look and um the gentleman here i say gentleman i call everybody gentleman mm -hmm. is um he's he's thin he has like a what was like light brown or darker blonde hair okay He's, he's, um, kind of effeminate looking. Oh, wow. All right. Well, hello, Jeffrey. Thanks. Stolen cheeks, pointy, you know, mm -hmm. pretty, pretty hair. It's cut short, but it has like long layers on it. And he's got his legs crossed and he has his arms folded in front of him. And he's leaning back in the chair. You know, he's not big, powerful energy. He's just. Okay. Perched. Perched in his chair. So, Jeffrey, thank you for coming. That's when you respond. <laughs> oh, he just nodded his head. Okay, well, we'll take that as a response. Tell me, I just want to know a little bit about your childhood, at least what parts of it influence you become a, ser a serial killer. There's awkward silence here. Oh. Um, what parts of it? Um, he doesn't talk very socially. Like, mm -hmm. we're not bantering back and forth. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, quick-witted and things like that. You know, that's the kind of thing I'm used to with, with Eric. Uh, he is giving me, like, portions of of a sentence, really. Okay. Not, um, he, he starts off with, um, as you know, the, the person that we're speaking to right now, the entity that we're talking to right now, is um, not the man that we're, that you're really looking to interview, mm -hmm. is how he put it. Um, he says that man is a part of me, but a ghost of me. Mm -hmm. And he said, you are, uh, he'll, he'll kind of put his hands together. He said, you're requiring me to discuss that life as if I am still that and I am not. Okay. So we're going to clear it, but that's cleared up now. So looking back at that life, what was it? He interrupts me and he said, you could clearly imagine that I am, I was not raised to be this person, uh, that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, he calls it JD. So it's almost a little removed. Oh, okay. Um, his relationships with his family is what he's discussing now. There was never any... Um, huge bonds, and there was never huge uh, torture or 
or abuse. Mm-hmm. Um, he said it that his father taught him how to be extremely reserved. Okay. And taught him how to be in control. Mm-hmm. And he said, I think because I felt I could not have that JD could mm-hmm. not have certain control over his life, that he obsessed on those qualities of being able to um, contain himself in ways that no one else could see. Mm. And he said, this is where I started creating dialogue within uh, my head, within JD's head, that he says, I'm sure if analyzed would seem psych psychosomatic okay. is that a word yeah um but he said he created these conversations to help him stay in balance what do you mean conversations within his head yeah okay yeah a, a, like a, a different personalities in a way okay but it, it stayed here he, he's showing me he didn't take on the personality and act out as that identity Mm -hmm. and then become someone else. It was always him, but he had them in his head. Okay. And he knows that they were hand created by him. This was not an experience of communicating to spirit or having Mm -hmm. many spirit voices inside of his head. Okay. He's quiet. All right. So, why did you commit the atrocities? What was behind that? Was it some sort of spiritual contract? It's really interesting. His energy is completely on that side of the room. Mm -hmm. It is not even coming over here at all. (laughs) He's not looking at, you know, making a statement, making a mark, Mm -hmm. you know, controlling the Congress, none of that. And I'm wondering these kind of other spirits in the room, all lovely men and women, different, Mm -hmm his races they're all just supporting um i don't feel like they're crowd members I really well, feel like- let me interrupt and ask uh, jd are the, these people your victims no okay who are they your friends your your god no they don't relate to jd's life at all these oh, okay are- uh, you can consider them um, healers, gurus, uh, whatever kind of title like that. Teacher, there's support system here. Kind of like a mosh pit. This, this dimensional plane. They're kind of the mosh pit form. All right, so go on. Was it? A Sorry, Eric is Eric is interrupting and um, kind of talking over you because you mentioned his his victims, and Eric said, "Do you ever see them? Do you ever come across them? And and how is that like?" Yeah, great um, question. Uh, he's talking. I have to catch up. I apologize. He's talking about the 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 people that he interacted with as JD and and took their lives. Now, when he he wants to make it clear, he doesn't see no that I didn't understand it. I'm sorry. That he's talking about the value of life. That he does value life now. But in the in in JD, he saw no value in life. You know, like the soul in somebody's body, it didn't have any meaning to him. He had no no understanding of it. It wasn't the um, the joy of removing the life from the person, oh. ending the person. It wasn't about the murder. Mm-hmm. It was about the control that he had over somebody else. Ah, back to the and control then, issue. Yeah. It was this being able to remove choices from the other person and Mm -hmm. dominate them and take over, even in sexual and inappropriate ways Mm -hmm. that this other person wouldn't want, which gave him power and control. The joy joy was not about the the soul leaving the body. He had no concept of respect. Was there some sort of spiritual contract, though? I mean, did you... Did you do this to learn or to teach some someone? He is kind of answering everybody's question. He's stating that he he did have the freedom in this life to break a lot of 
boundaries, mm -hmm. rules within the, the human, and he moves his hands to do this, the human law. Okay. Like human respect. Mm -hmm. um, that in his incarnation as JD, that was uh, expected to grow, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. not to the degree that he took it. Okay. So there was many instances that were not predestined or planned. Mm -hmm. um, really took his free will and his psych. Is it psychosomatic mm -hmm. mind? Mm -hmm. um, this it could be psychopathic to, mind. Psychopathic <laughs> mind. Uh oh, cat! Sorry about the cat fight behind us. <laughs> that um. <laughs> That wasn't really designed. He used a lot of his free will, which gave him more excitement about having control over something. There we go. Where he so, couldn't. So you, you're here to learn about. You were here to learn about boundaries. Is that what it is? Or controlling boundaries? He feels again when he talks about his life. It's all. It's not about the guy who's sitting in front of me. It's like this JD <laughs> over here. Mm -hmm. um, he says, as JD. He says, I feel it was not about me learning anything except being completely destruct destructive. Okay. Um, and he says, I don't believe that many humans see that being noteworthy, mm -hmm. but from great destruction does come a better understanding. And I hope to some degree that JD's experiences and outbursts mm -hmm. gave some people, the uprising, that emotion to forward healing, progression for other people who have um, psychosomatic issues, psycho okay. issues. <clears throat> what Again, oh, what did I, he's saying that JD <clears throat> did not do it all in the cause of being psychosomatic, though. Like, okay. he's not saying... Psychopathic in this case? Psychopathic. Okay. Get it he together. Kind of has Jamie. A, a mumble. <clears throat> hmm? Get it together, Jamie. All right. Why did you why did you cannibalize your victims? That's kind of gross. Were they tasty? Are you serious? Yeah. I kid you not. <clears throat> and why did you preserve their remains in like the refrigerator and things like that? <clears throat> I am so glad that I'm not feeling or seeing any of this. I know. I'm very gross. Of the people in the room right now. Yeah, gross. Um, again, he's not bringing that energy into the room at all either. He's, I guess what you could say, being respectful. He has learned that. Um, doing that, so being JD, doing that which was not expected, not accepted, set him apart and he said when you get into the mind of someone who really has no concept of soul mm -hmm. of being and he says which means i had no concept or understanding of myself he said my actions on others were the same value i held on my own as jd he didn't see him as godlike, like he had the right to do so, mm -hmm. just that he had no understanding of it whatsoever. So he didn't know why he cannibalized it except to set himself apart and do something different? <clears throat> I mean, it wasn't he, like he wanted to take on the soul of the person or something weird like that. He said that if he ate them, he thought maybe it would give him the power of that person. Oh. Um, but... That is something, something gross. <laughs> Sorry. Words you thought you'd never say in your entire life. Um, <laughs> so he goes, now in looking back, I know that, you know, the flesh was meat, didn't have the soul in it. Mm. But in my head, because I couldn't comprehend it, I felt that if I had consumed it, I would have that soul, that energy, okay. maybe to be stronger or better, to know more. Mm -hmm. He says, but I always stayed the same. What was your sexual orientation? 
God, Eric. Eric goes, were you gay or not? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, think of a question, Eric, because you're next. Uh, he said yes. You were JD, gay? JD preferred men over women. Okay, all right. No, no judgment. That's cool. Now, uh, why did you become the man you were? I think I asked that one. Okay, now, when you crossed over, what was your life review like? Did you have any epiphanies or realizations? Uh, he's describing that when JD's life was over, there was an immense amount of darkness for a long period of time. Mm. There was not this sense of a review. He didn't report to anyone there was darkness. Okay. For a long time. And then the life review. I guess you asked for help. You were in the darkness, and you must have asked for help. And He out. said, I did. Mm -hmm. He reached out out of curiosity, and he found, he found um, this boy mm -hmm. that he had, he had taken his life. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was a, boy that he had taken his life who had come and pulled him out of the darkness to show him. Okay. Well, that's kind of so awkward. Eric, Eric says, can you go on? He goes, what did you see? You know, was it the same like the rest of us where we, um, he's nodding his head. Yes. He had the experience of viewing, uh, his whole life from birth on mm -hmm. through the eyes of the people around him. Oh, through, through the eyes of his victims. Yes, he says those would be some of the people around him, yeah. And family members, I guess, friends? He said yes. Okay. Eric, what about you? Let's have a question. So Eric brought up the question again. He goes, do you see the people that you murdered? So inappropriate. You really Eric want to know that. <laughs> Eric goes, do you high five them? I mean, do you get lunch? Like, what's up? <laughs> Eric. I only smiled to release the anxiety. That's the only sure. reason I'm giggling. Okay. <clears throat> uh, he does see the, the victims. He said, you have to understand the, the life that you leave behind after you die. Mm -hmm. He said, yes, it does remain a part of you, but the relationship status mm -hmm. of all the people you've interacted with, do not stay the same. Do not stay the same. Okay. A lot of the human experience and the human quality cannot blossom, mm -hmm. cannot live where we are now. It does not value it less or hold it in a different state of respect, mm -hmm. but it allows you to heal those relationships. He said, I have chosen as myself, as, as myself as a whole, to interact with all my victims, mm -hmm. to make peace and understanding. Okay, that's good. No, I forgot to ask about, back to the cannibalism. What, what do we taste like? Pork, chicken, fish, lima beans. Lima beans. I know. Just threw it out there. Um, he said there's not a lot of taste and it's very chewy. Hmm. What parts did you eat? You have to really season it well. I guess so. The cayenne pepper won't hurt it. Um, what parts do you prefer eating? Just everything? Um, he did eat some of the muscles, but not the main muscle groups because they were too tough. Mm -hmm. But also organs, uh, such as the brain. Kidney. And uh, he tried liver as well. He says the the easiest part. I fucking I cannot believe we were talking about that. <laughs> Poor Jamie. <clears throat> All right, take a breath. Is he making you hungry? No. I bet not. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, 
the easiest part to digest of, of uh, in his experience were organs rather than muscles. Okay. Uh, did you kill, did you saw them, their extremities and stuff off while they were alive or did you, did you kill them first? Uh, it was different in every case. Oh, God. Eric, what about a question from you? And maybe we should veer off from the gross ones. I'm just repeating in my head. I'm just the translator. I'm just the translator. Just here to translate. Just translating. Eric is laughing because he can hear me. <laughs> Running in my head. I'm just a translator. <clears throat> Eric completely changes it. <laughs> he said it was to save my ass. Yeah. Um, he asked JD, he said, so what is your favorite experience about your afterlife oh, just good one. leaving <clears throat> and um his response see i don't really know how to address you because he keeps talking about jd as a little bit away from him but he, he said his feeling rested in his body and not having the conflict in his mm -hmm. head that has been the greatest gift to him yeah. in the afterlife um, and he said, it, it's very hard to talk about the life that you had obviously chosen and played through with that created so much destruction and pain, um, because it's not seen as something valued. Mm -hmm. And he said, so being here, it gives me the opportunity to look at my other lives mm -hmm. where I'm most like myself, where I am more attuned with the enjoyment and protection of life rather than the destruction of it. Yeah, how did you die? Did they, I can't remember, by electric chair, hanging, shot by the police? Um, no, he just tells me that he was put to death. Okay. He right, won't well, me. Okay. He doesn't discuss how. <clears throat> All right. Uh, share another life, if you don't mind, that influenced the life. Your life as JD. <clears throat> uh, he's talking about World War One. Mm -hmm. He was a um, sharpshooter. Uh, someone who's protected, put up to the side to have perfect aim. Like a sniper. Sniper. <clears throat> like a sniper. <clears throat> Let me clear Eric says, without the clean <clears throat> sniper gun, but yeah. Um, <laughs> he says in World War I, he took you know, three times the amount of lives he did in this lifetime. Mm. But because it was done in the name of war, it was seen as productive. But he, he noticed how um, death gives the country a right to pull together. It gives the right for communities to pull in close. And he says to do what they feel is necessary. But without that great tension, communities didn't feel that need. Mm. And he said it, it set me off. It's like wondering. death was okay under those circumstances. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yes. <clears throat> and he, he says, I, I wondered how that would play if war wasn't in the picture, mm -hmm. but death occurred. And to do that, I needed to not understand the value of life, of, of soul, of mm -hmm. anything. That makes sense. I got this opportunity. What about some more questions, Eric? <laughs> From you? <laughs> Eric puts his hands back like this. He goes, eh, I'm good. How about you, Jamie? Any questions? Uh, well, JD, is there anything else you want to share? Anything you'd like the people, I'm not going to say your fans, but the people out there? What do you want them to know? Uh, he's nodding his head. 
he said, I would like people to know <clears throat> when you see someone uh, that you do not know their name, you do not know their story, you feel you have no attachment to them whatsoever. Do not value them less than you. See them as equally as needed as yourself. Um, he puts a hand up, just kind of nods his head. He says, thank you. Sure. All um, right, well, I don't have any other. Let me see if I have any other questions. Well, I guess that's it. Ah, coffee break. All right, here we go. My throat is all whatever. All right, well, thank you, J.D., for coming in. And I know, I guess this was probably a little difficult for you, right? All right, thank you. And, well, who are those other people? They're just random people, you say? Seriously? No family or friends? Nobody? That they you know? are, no, they are not from J.D.'s life. They are... Uh, I guess they are here for me to keep the balance in the room to okay. like, it was so much easier than probably what it could have been. I mean, no, we, yeah, we could have sold tickets, popcorn. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Dang it. All right. Well, that's wonderful. JD. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. Eric, thank you for being a part of it and helping us. Jamie, thank you for translating for us. Now, if you guys want to find out more about, um, Jamie Butler, and let me tell you, she's got some events, including this great Channeling Eric event that's going to be held in Denver. You guys got to go and keep up with, with uh, for just look for announcement, announcements on the blog. Uh, anyway, her website is withloveandlight.com, www, of course, withloveandlight.com. Check it out. She is awesome. Subscribe, to her, subscribe to her newsletter, too. <laughs> Thank you. And anybody watching, you're obviously here because you know Eric. And if you haven't checked out Eric's story and how this all came about with his mom, Elisa, go to channelingeric.com. And that is Eric with a K. Don't forget that one. All right. Start at the beginning. Yes, yeah, start at the beginning. That's right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Right, thank, thank you. you. Thank Eric says you, bye Eric. to everybody. Prank you later. Bye. I love you, Eric. He says bye, Mom. Bye.